Brenda, Dave, first let me show you what the problem is. We're out here in Kelly Ingram Park. Now you can see this parking meter appears to be working. When you put your quarter in though, the time remains at zero. It didn't take me long to find three meters in this area that act the same way. Let me show you right now. You can see Alabama Speaker of the House Mike Hubbard leaving the Luke Lee County Judicial Center right now after day one in the ethics trial against him. The state is trying to prove 23 felony ethics charges alleging that he used his office for personal gain. Deputy Attorney General Michael Duffy told the jury that Hubbard was selling his office, that he just put a for sale sign in front of the speaker's door. And the shooting that happened inside this house was not the first time that Coral Wilson felt threatened by the father of her children. In March, she filed for this protection order against Norris. You can see the results right here. 90% of the people in Coleman who I spoke to today want to see a lottery go on the ballot. Pam Moore was smiling. He appeared to be in good spirits. He had a crowd here at the Judicial Building supporting him. He, afterwards, when he spoke with reporters and spoke with supporters, he said that he believes there's no evidence that he did anything wrong. It also requires that local school districts report to the state each year that students can still write like this. Governor Robert Bentley apologizes for the inappropriate comments he made to top advisor Rebecca Mason, but he emphatically denied that they had any sexual activity between the two of them or that there was any unlawful activity on his part. This all came to light Wednesday after the man that Bentley fired Tuesday told the media he heard a recording of Bentley speaking to Mason. Uh, body parts were, were mentioned. Uh, and at one point, a statement was given, if we're going to do what we did yesterday, we need to lock the door. A description from former Alabama Law Enforcement Agency Secretary Spencer Collier. Collier outlined what he knew of Bentley and Mason's relationship, concerned about the influence he believes she has. And the level of influence that she is yielding makes her the de facto governor. She is, she is my closest aide or one of my, one of my aides that is part of my leadership team. Bentley fired Collier Tuesday. Bentley said an internal review identified a possible misuse of funds. Collier denies misusing funds and says he was fired because he signed an affidavit saying the attorney general's office did no wrongdoing in the trial against Alabama Speaker of the House Mike Hubbard. My crime is this, I refused to lie to the attorney general's office and I signed an affidavit that was part of my job. Governor Bentley says he never asked anyone to lie. He apologized for the comments heard in the recording, but says it never escalated to more. I have stated emphatically today that I have not had a physical relationship with Mrs. Mason. And at times in the past, have I said things that I should not have said? Absolutely, and that's what I'm saying today. And at no time, have I ever used the resources of my office to facilitate a relationship of any type? When asked if he loves Mason, the governor replied that he loves many members of his staff. He also said today that he has no plans of stepping down. Reporting live at the Alabama Capitol, I'm Lauren Walsh, ABC 3340. Claude Washington parked outside the Jefferson County Courthouse. But when he paid his meter, I'm looking for my time. Just put a quarter in the machine and it's still saying zero. In this parking spot, we know of at least two parking tickets ran in the same number of days. Washington was warned before it happened to him. Well, I mean, if I get a ticket, I feel like I've been tricked. But Downtown is in Birmingham Council President Jonathan Austin's district. He says he gets a lot of complaints. Even outside of City Hall, 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, where a lot of locations where people come into the city to visit and they're putting money in when it reads zero and in even after they put their money in they're thinking that the meter has accepted their money but it doesn't. Presiding judge of the municipal court Andre Sparks does not have statistics on how often this happens. He doesn't think it happens too frequently but he says they count on citizen complaints to address the problem. Unless there was a complete total automation of all the parking meters which would cost millions of dollars. Um, right now, there's nothing that can be done other than to be vigilant. Sparks is asking citizens to report broken meters when they find them. And if you get a ticket at a broken meter, he asks for you to take pictures and bring your ticket to municipal court so it can be forgiven. I'm glad you let us know what's going on. We'll try to get somebody out there. We'll, we'll let parking enforcement know to get someone out there. To 
Of course, I've reported the meters that I found today. If you have a broken meter you need to report, call Birmingham Parking Enforcement. I have that phone number in this story on our website. That's abc3340.com. Reporting live in Birmingham, I'm Lauren Walsh, ABC 3340. I started the story today trying to find out why the mayor cut funding for Birmingham Community Schools. That's an after school program for hundreds of students. The mayor's office told me it was an error, just like yesterday when they told me it was a mistake when I asked why 46 police officers were being cut. Mayor William Bell's budget proposal is out, a line by line document outlining how your tax dollars may be spent when the new fiscal year begins July 1. When you look at funding for the police department, this budget shows a reduction of 46 police officers. When ABC 3340 asked the mayor's office, we were told they are not being cut at all. That is a mistake in the file. Council President Pro Tem Stephen Hoyt does not know why. Uh, I think the mayor would have to explain himself. Uh, and you just can't casually say uh, we made a mistake um, because that's something that's so, uh, you know, so uh, prevalent. I mean, you know, so. Um, necessary. How do, how do you do that? Boyd is happy to know the mayor does not plan on cutting the police positions. That's what people are complaining about. You know, I brought a, a group of folks last week talking about the, um, you know, the infrequency of the uh, presence of the police officers in the community. When it comes to community schools, you can see this budget has zero dollars for the program, which serves about 500 students. ABC 3340 asked why. The mayor's office calls it an error. Today it released this memo. It reads, funding has now been restored in the amount of $665,000 to community schools. I asked the mayor's office if the mayor reviewed this budget before it was presented. I was told the proposed budget is a living, breathing document that is tweaked and changed up to the time it's passed by city council. The mayor is continuously reviewing it and will continue to do so throughout the month. They said to expect more changes. I also asked where the money's coming from to add it to community schools and to the police officers in order to keep this budget balanced. I'm still waiting on that answer. Pam. Hey, providers tell me that this is going to impact access to health care in Alabama and the effects could ripple down. Because of the cut physicians, some physicians are planning to accept fewer Medicaid patients, which could mean more patients flooding emergency rooms like this one. The majority of Dr. Robert Smith's patients are on Medicaid. He says he doesn't know how he's going to absorb the cut scheduled to begin in three weeks. Access to care right now is we're going to have to reduce the number of Medicaid patients that we see. Okay. Some medical professionals are simply saying this, I can't afford to see them anymore. Smith says he's one pediatrician considering moving to a different state. Why should you take care of a patient in Alabama for 30 percent less than you take care of a patient, say, in Georgia? Right now, it looks like almost any place is better than here. Smith's patients are frustrated, too. Christy White came in for a checkup with her family. She says she already has a tough time finding a doctor who accepts Medicaid patients. You're on the phone calling five or six different doctors and everything, trying to see who takes it. She's concerned the cut may make it harder. Because I really don't have the transportation to go far out. Hospitals are also concerned. Brian Massey with St. Vincent says the emergency room will be ready to fill the need, but he's calling for lawmakers to make a change. We're, what we're calling for is a, is a special session called by the governor to to deal with Medicaid funding because we are 85 million dollars short. The governor's office tells me there are no plans right now about a special session. I did talk by phone today with Republican Senator Jabo Wagner from Vestavia Hills. He tells me when lawmakers do return that he believes that BP settlement money will be the best option to help fill the gap for Medicaid. But with this cut expected to begin August 1st, just three weeks away, doctors are not waiting to see what happened. They're already making plans on how to fill the shortfall. Reporting live in Birmingham, I'm Lauren Walsh, ABC 3340. Dave, this verdict removes Mike Hubbard from office. He is no longer Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives, no longer a lawmaker in Alabama. Even just one guilty count would have done that, and the jury found Hubbard guilty on 12 felony ethics charges. So who takes over? Let's talk about what's next. Speaker pro tem Victor Gaston from Mobile is now the acting Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives until a new speaker is elected. Sentencing for Hubbard will be July 8th. 
Each of the counts he was found guilty on has a maximum sentence of 2 to 20 years in jail. Also, defense attorney David McKnight told me tonight he plans to appeal. We're going to have more from McKnight in just a couple minutes. But first, let's talk about what is Hubbard guilty of? The state says he used his office to make money and get financial favors from people with interest in front of the legislature. The state said Hubbard improperly tried to obtain $2.3 million worth of investments and financial favors. Some of the guilty counts included Hubbard's consulting clients, his consulting contracts. One of them was with a pharmacy group called APCI, one with an education company called Ingenuity, and another contract was with a company called Capital Cups. More charges that Hubbard was found guilty of relate to investments that were made when he asked lobbyists or people who hire lobbyists to make investments into his troubled printing company here in Auburn called Craft masters. He was found guilty on four counts there. One investment came from Will Brook, one came from James Holbrook, one from Jimmy Rain, and one from Rob Burton. Now, all along, Hubbard's defense has maintained those investments were made only as friends, tried to use the friendship exception in the Alabama <coughs> ethics law. The jury disagreed that that exception applied there, found him guilty of those charges. The defense maintained also all along that Hubbard tried to do all of this by the book, that several times they said he reached out to the Alabama Alabama Ethics Commission to try to make sure everything he was doing was within the law. None of that made a difference on the 12 counts the jury found him guilty on. Now, Lauren, a couple of these charges involved former Governor Bob Riley and his daughter. Uh, tell us about the verdict on those charges. Dave, that was two charges, one relating to former Governor Bob Riley and one to his daughter, Minda Riley Campbell. The charges there, the state said, because they're both registered lobbyists in the state, that Hubbard tried to solicit uh, something of value, that he was trying to get help getting new clients from both of them who are registered lobbyists. And lawmakers are not allowed to get anything of value from lobbyists or people who hire lobbyists in the state. But I do want to tell you that the, the jury found Hubbard not guilty on both of those charges, not guilty on the count with former Governor Bob Riley, not guilty on the count with his daughter, uh, Minda Riley Campbell. So uh, the friendship exception seems to have worked on those charges throughout testimony. Riley was on the stand here for three days talking about how close he, uh, friends he is with Hubbard, and that definitely made an impact on the jury. And also, Lauren, have you heard from Hubbard or his attorneys after this verdict? We have not heard from Hubbard. He did not come out of the front door here at the courthouse, but I did see his defense attorney, David McKnight, and I did ask him a couple questions. Let's roll it now. Can you tell us your reaction to the verdict? We're very disappointed. What do you, what do you say to the jurors who thought there was proof beyond reasonable doubt? I'm not gonna make a comment. The Are you gonna appeal the case? Yes, we will appeal. So you heard McKnight saying the defense does plan to appeal, but the sentencing for this case again will be July 8th. Mike Hubbard found guilty on 12 of 23 felony ethics charges. Dave.